about how you know, uh, you know that afternoon section that you go to for officer training she has to schedule already so barbara sorry to tell everybody <laughs> she is actively division d director right now and she is wonderful she's a mentor she has been with her club for a while since 2013 she's been with her club and she had her dtm completed in 2021 i'm still trying to get that barbara i'm still trying to get mine i experienced she has been a, col a colleague of technical in the technical world. So when you hear her speak, I'm sure she'll have all the technicalities to go with it. <laughs> Barbara, like I said, is division D director for this year. It's this much this year. Barbara, I'm waiting to hear all the wonderful Toastmasters history you have to share with us. Young May, just like you heard Young May talk a while ago, Young May's trying. One of the things Young May is trying to do is encourage her club. And yes, I have visited her club. And she's trying to get her club set up in the Toastmasters world of mentorship. So like she said, she encouraged us to have this, to let other clubs know mentorship actually helps. Young May is one of the clubs she belongs to. She belongs to actually belongs to two clubs. She's part of the bilingual, Chinese Interpreter Charter of the North American Chinese Bilingual Toastmaster Club. And they were established last year. They're so new. <laughs> she, she was, she is, she served as the club president and currently she's the VPE, VP of Education, wow. She has also been, a, she is also a member of MESA, Best Toastmaster and she is the training coordinator with Rhonda Young this year, the PKD. Great job, great job. Christine Wilson, what can I say about Christine? I've known, I, well, Christine and I work in the same company. Let's, let's, spoiler alert. Christine has been a member of Toastmasters for eight years, eight solid years. Wow, Christine. Christine, I know you said in all, almost all the roles. Christine? is currently our coordinator for membership for Toastmasters mentorship in our company. She belongs to Toastmasters, delivered with excellence and have a for Toastmasters. She's VP of mentorship program within District 38. Christine has served as area director, division director, training coordinator, and she is a member of the audit committee. Well done, Christine, great job. <laughs> and all the other hats you wear. I call her my guru, Toastmasters. She's a Toastmaster guru. Any, any news, anything coming out about Toastmasters? Get to know Christine, she has insights. Well, to get into what we've come here today to learn, let's jump right into it. I have this panelist to answer our questions. And if you have any questions, like Young May said, please drop it in the chat. Or when it comes to questioning and answering, we can get to you then. If I can start. In your own words, Tane, can you describe Toastmasters to us? What it is, what you would tell others, what it would do to encourage others, you know, your Toastmasters journey. Thank you, Tane. Well, good morning, all. What does Toastmasters mean to me? Well, I'm, among other things, I'm currently the Vice President of Education for ETS Toastmasters outside of Princeton. And for the last several years, we've been stressing progress over perfection. And that means get up and do something. Don't worry about being perfect. You know, the important thing is to make progress to improve a little bit every time that you get up. And that seems to have really captivated some people. Uh, in that club especially, we're 
I think we're doing an especially good job of a variety of people taking on roles. In another club I'm in, it's the same core of people most of the time taking most of the roles, but at ETS, we've managed to really diversify and getting a greater share of our members to be very actively engaged. And in closing, I always try to emphasize that treat Toastmasters like a laboratory. There's really no right way or wrong way to do it. It's your chance to experiment and see what works best for you. Thank you so much, Tane. That was encouraging. Barbara, can we get your insight on that? Thank you. Good morning. Well, I, I loved what Tane just said, except that in the medical laboratory, there is only one way to do things so that the patient gets the correct result. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Toastmasters, it, it, to me, is what you you, you get out of it what you put into it. If you want to become a better speaker, you have every opportunity to do that. If you want to learn about leadership because you want to move up in your job, you can do that. You can do both. Toast, Toastmasters is social. I just love being in the club to be around people when I was working who are not medical because that was my life for, well, since too long ago. I just, and I love the diversity. I love learning about other people through Toastmasters. It's just a wonderful organization to be part of. And that, that's what it means to me. Thank you, Barbara. Young May, you're next. <laughs> Thank you for your question and good morning, everybody. Uh, what Toastmaster means to me, and since I have only uh, been a member for two years, um, it means to me is, is is that you do what I saw on some a teacher's tote bag. It says, live, learn, and teach. You have plenty of stories and members have plenty of personal stories to share, and they are there to learn to communicate those better with people around them. And once they get better, like Tang said, don't leave the club. You are there to help other people as well. So it's like a cycle of live, learn, and teach. And I love being in Toastmasters because I get to learn, I get to develop my skills, and I get to help and encourage other people and network with other people and get to know them, get to know the true story. And it's more fascinating than watching a TV drama to me. <laughs> Back to you, um, Aditi. Thank you so much, Young May. You heard it here. Live, learn, teach. That's what she said. Don't take your knowledge with you. Stay just like Tim said and encourage others. Christine, let's hear your thoughts on that. Good morning. I second what the other three panelists have already said. In addition, I would say that the slogan of Toastmasters is where leaders are made. Like many people, I found Toastmasters because of my fear of public speaking. But after overcoming that fear through practice within the Toastmasters clubs that I belong to, I developed other skills, like the leadership skills that I didn't even know that I was seeking. Along the way, I built a lot of confidence which is not something that I expected to gain from actively participating in Toastmasters clubs and meetings. So I encourage everybody to do as Barbara said, and you, you get what you put into it, actively participate, and you'll probably be surprised by the positive effects. Thank you so much, Christine. Thank you, thank you, everybody. And yes, my Toastmasters journey, just like I told you, I met Christine. That's how I met Christine. I was worried that I was just bored and I needed something new. And since then, I have been jumping from one role to the other. So I'm still excited to see what new role I'm going to get into. So we'll see. If I may ask, would, would you, would any of you suggest like Toastmasters Club should encourage the Toastmasters program 
in their club, what benefit do you think it will bring to the club? Christine, I know we're fairly, fairly new. And one of the things we introduced was the Toastmasters mentorship. Any insights on it? Yes, I think that by establishing a mentoring program, a club will find that its members are more engaged and it might not take members a year or two to give their icebreaker speech. We have a fairly new member in our club who is in the audience today. I'll give a shout out to Kathy who Hi, Kathy. joined last year and six months later, she volunteered to be a mentor herself. She's paying it forward. And I think that's what we can do with these mentoring programs. If we're positively encouraging people and giving them the support that they need, they'll pay it forward to the next generation of Toastmasters members. Thank you, Kristen. Pay it forward, you hear it again. Tain, your club has been around for a while. Your Kristen club has been around for a while. And I know you're, you're the coordinator for mentorship in that club. You must have seen a lot of mentoring. Anything you can encourage us with that would tell us that that mentorship program actually helps and lasts in a club setting. Can you help us out with that? Oh, certainly. Well, then in the case of my Princeton club, we're inching toward 60 members, which either, either is a blessing or a curse. Uh, if you're a newer member and you're a little shy and there's you have 60 members, which means at a meeting you'll have you know 30 or 35 people there. It's very easy to hide and sit in the back and get phone calls when it comes to table topics time. So where you have to leave the room, I think we've all been there. <laughs> By having mentors, uh, it's just somebody to encourage you. I was telling the group before we started, when I first moved to New Jersey, I was in a club. It was not the Princeton club. And it took me a full year to give my icebreaker. And then it only took another two and a half years before I gave my second speech. We did not have any sort of mentorship program there. It was, even though it was a smaller group, I was, it was easy to hide in the back. You know, I was, I was happy to be timer or awe counter, but you know, speaker or toastmaster or evaluator, that took years. And I, I'm fairly confident that if I could have had somebody there explaining things to me, encouraging me, helping me think things through, I could have gotten a much, much faster start. Thank you, Tane. You heard it from Tane. Get the mentor, pick up the mentor, not the phone call. That's what he said. Instead of hiding from, <laughs> through the phone call, why not get yourself a mentor to help you through it? Because you just know the slogan for Toastmasters is where leaders are made. You can only make yourself a leader if you pick up the mentor, not the phone call. What about you, Barbara? You're retired. You're, you're, you're living large right now. What will you tell us? You know, <laughs> is it to get the phone call or to pick up the mentor? What, what, can, what can you share with us on that? Well, I've never been in a club as big as Princeton. <laughs> Uh, I was assigned a mentor when I first joined and that person moved out of state about, I don't know, a month or so after I, I joined and I wasn't assigned another mentor. Would I have liked one? Probably. But I'm a self-starter because of the type of job I had. It, it was I was a field technical rep and we are responsible or were responsible for our own schedules. And I took that to Toastmasters. However, I've been mentor to some who really needed that push. And the ones I've mentored have not waited two and a half years to do their second speech. And that's why I feel mentorship is so important. Maybe the word mentor is intimidating to some, but the word buddy, like a Toastmasters buddy might be less intimidating. It's just somebody that you can ask a question anytime, but it's just so important, especially for those new members, because 
in a room of 10 or a room of 30, they're still the newbie. And if they know they have that buddy that they can sit next to every time, whether you call it a mentor or a buddy, then they feel less intimidated. And that person, that buddy can say, hey, you know, get up and, and go do that table topics. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. You heard it. Don't intimidate your mentees. Guess what? Be their body. Be their body. And you, though you're just must to be responsible. That's what she's saying. Be yourself starter like she was. If I can ask, what would you say a mentor should be? And who should, who would you encourage to be a mentor? What would you say a mentor should be? And who do you think you should encourage to be a mentor? We just heard from Barbara right now. Her mentor left and she jumped right into the role. So Barbara, can you take that? I, I think a mentor should be somebody who's a positive person, somebody who is outgoing. Lots of people have been in Toastmasters for years and there's still a little bit of a shrinking violet. They're not always first to get up. A mentor shouldn't be somebody who's in Toastmasters just for themselves, just to, for whatever their personal goal is. I had personal goals when I joined, and I joined because of a personal goal outside of Toastmasters. I wasn't afraid to speak in front of a small group or do a panel discussion, but I knew I had to give a presentation in front of three to 400 people, and that scared me. But now I'm I'm very outgoing. I smile a lot. People, a mentor should be somebody with a little bit of personality because you don't want that mentor to be almost like the new member where they're not, they're afraid to, to get up and contribute. I'm sure my other panelists have more ideas on what kind of person should be a mentor. Young May, what would you say? Oh, thank you for the question. To me, I think a good mentor, like Christine said, she has to be, should have been in the club for like at least six months. Actually, that's a recommendation by Toastmaster International. And they have gone through some roles already. And this person I hope is really encouraging, but at the same time, not overly opinionated, not to take over the mentorship or giving, serving as a coach role, like directing the member, here's what you should do. Um, I have tried that, it works for me. This is you, the way you should go. Um, I realized that at that point, because my club is um, has members who are very, who come from different backgrounds, different professional background, even though we are all bilingual in both Chinese and Mandarin, but some of us, came from overseas, from China, from Taiwan, from other region of the world. Some grew up here. So we have actually different cultural background because some, the predominant cultural background is Chinese. The other one is American. So not everybody's opinion way the working works for everybody. So that's what something I learned through, through Toastmasters. So a mentor would be open-minded and be encouraging back to you. Thank you, young man. So what I'm hearing is like, don't be a mentor because you want to build your on your own profile, being it for others. Tim, can you shed more light on that? Actually, yeah, that raises a good point. I found, especially at the Princeton Club, for me as the coordinator, it's important that the mentor wants to be a mentor mm -hmm. and not that they were guilted into it, if you will. One thing I'd like to stress is I hate the word desperate. Never say I'm desperate for mentors. We desperately need mentors. To me, that says, well, I've exhausted every other venue and you're the next best thing. So I always, if I'm recruiting mentors, I always want to present it as an opportunity. I'm never desperate to find a mentor. If somebody's really not interested, I move on because the relationship going forward is important that the, the mentor wants to be there and is actually wants to be engaged and is interested in helping the new member. So just remember, never be desperate. 
Thank you, Tim. See, mentorship as an opportunity, he said. Christine, can we get your view on that? I, I agree that being a mentor is a great opportunity. And in addition to giving to somebody else, it's an opportunity for the mentor to build leadership skills. Maybe you are somebody who is opinionated and this is an opportunity to listen more. So if your club has a mentoring program with a coordinator or vice president mentoring, that person should educate the new mentors and provide support for them to help them develop their mentoring skills. In Pathways, anybody who has completed level two of any path is presented with the Pathways Mentoring Mentor Program, where you get additional educational materials that are focused on serving as a mentor. So I would encourage anybody who wants to mentor to look for that opportunity as well. Thank you, Christine. You heard it from Christine here. You only not, not only do you get a buddy, just like Barbara said, you get the points from pathways. So I think level two, level three helps you out. And then it opens up a new mentorship program for you on the side once you complete level two. Thank you so much. Tim, what are different forms of mentorship you've seen? Like, I know some people said the reverse mentorship, straight mentorship. What are some different forms of mentorship you've seen? And can you share some of them with us? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I would say mostly in all cases, it's collaborative. Uh, for, for, well, for instance, the, the latest mentor mentee that I was able to pair will both be speaking at our next meeting. They're both excited. You know, they want to preview each other's speeches before the meeting. Um, they're, they're looking about it as going into it, you know, as a partnership. And I think in any case, that's what's important. One thing I did want to bring up, uh, I guess it's been a bit, little bit of a stumbling block in the past. People would say, oh, I can't be a mentor. I don't know anything about Pathways. That's subsided a little bit now that Pathways is our only option. But one thing, I think the thing that was the stumbling block was navigating materials online for some of the longer term members who weren't as familiar with it. We always stressed really the mentor mentoring aspect can focus on the speaking and the presenting and the leadership type roles. If you have technical questions, we have a few people in the club that you can turn to for that. As a mentor, you're not expected to be a technical expert on navigating materials online. And once that, I guess, sunk in, if you will, it really helped and people were much more ready and willing and eager to be mentors. Thank you, Tim. So you heard him. He says, make no excuse, get the partnership, be collaborative. And don't complain about pathways because it's here to stay. <laughs> Barbara, what can you tell us about that? <laughs> about pathways being here to stay? Um, about you, the different forms of mentorship, like is it partnership, collaborative, what? It Which definitely one? has to be a two-way street. I've just started mentoring a newer member who is was not born in the United States and who wants to increase his, his, his English and his grammar. I'm having a hard time even speaking. <laughs> However, I had a session with him yesterday and he had already given his icebreaker, which was phenomenal. But in that conversation with him yesterday, I stressed that I would be learning as, oh, as much from him as I learned from, as he says he wants to learn from me. And getting that relationship bringing it to a personal level is to me very important. It makes the mentee more comfortable. It's, I think, less intimidating if you can 
gain that trust, I told him anything we say in our sessions, whether it's in person or on Zoom, everything we discuss is between us. I will never share anything with anyone. I like, I well, not like, I love learning from others. My other mentee I've had for probably three or four years. She's a physically challenged young lady who is has made phenomenal progress and she's still completing her level one. I encourage her. I don't care if it takes another year for her to, but our goal is to level up this year. Woo-hoo. She has made phenomenal <laughs> progress in being able to speak without a filler word because she's also got some challenges putting the words together with with what comes out, which I always also have, and I don't have any limitations. But uh, to me, it's that relationship and adapting. The mentor has to adapt to the specific relationship and what's needed. And we can't impart our goals onto the mentee. We have to find out what they need, want, and then go from there and be able to be flexible about it. Thank you, Barbara. You heard it. Relationship, build your relationship, but let them be able to trust you. Mm -hmm. Let them be able to trust you. It's a two-way street, she said. Mm -hmm. And from Tien, you're not an expert, which means you have other people that can jump into other roles that they would need help with. You're just there to mentor them, encourage them to be the leaders that they're born to be. You know, build on your profile. Young way. Your club is trying to start a club mentorship program. What do you think? What different forms of levels do you think you might be able to incorporate into your club from hearing um, what you said? Yeah, so our my club is a bit uh, different than many established clubs because we we are only two years old. So from the get go. We don't have mentors to begin with for, I mean, when I say mentor, I mean mentors for the individual members because we were all new. We were all new members. We knew Toastmasters. Nobody stood finish any level. Um, so, but personally I was the club president. So I did get um, club mentors, but the two club mentors just mentor me, my leadership skills. So. Uh, my club is, I think, I, going forward, if we are going to establish and we are thinking about establishing a mentor uh, program, uh, we would like to incorporate all the excellent advice that the panelists suggested. Um, right now, just to help our members, we have what Barbara suggested, um, a buddy program, more specifically a language buddy program. But we do stress that improving language proficiency is just part of um, the growth. And the end goal is for members um, in this program to hold each other accountable and present a speech at the end of the eight week program. So that's my club's current situation, but I would definitely like to level up that to become a, a membership a mentor program. Thank you, Young May. Christine, in our second year, we started the mentorship program. So can you help Young May? Can you tell us, but you know, shed more lights on how we went about it? Yeah, the, the first thing that we did was we created a new club officer role, which is VP mentoring. As people may or may not know, mentoring technically falls under one of the many responsibilities of the vice president education. Our VPE was already tasked with so many other responsibilities. So we took that responsibility off of the VPE's plate, added this new club officer role, which is not an official Toastmasters International club officer role, but it is a member of our club's executive board. Our VP mentoring, currently myself, attends the monthly club officer meetings. One of the things that I do with our mentors is I set up a a monthly meeting. So it's important to support the people who volunteer to mentor. We give them guidelines to get started saying, here's, I should say that we generally are pairing up 
mentors with new members. That's been our focus. And we've successfully done that for a couple of years straight. So every new member is immediately paired up with a mentor. And we give the mentors some guidelines to help with their mentee. And we hold these regular meetings, which are open forums for all the mentors to get together and discuss the successes and any challenges that they're facing. And I think that helps the mentors to know that they're not in this alone. So that's something that I would recommend. The other thing that I would say is that given that so many clubs are meeting virtually, if you're having trouble finding mentors within your own club, don't be afraid to ask people from other clubs in District 38. Attend these club officer trainings, attend all of the contests and meet people outside of your club. Don't be afraid to ask for help outside. Thank you, Christine. I hope that answers some of your question, Young May. And other people that are here, I see Eloise is here. She wants to establish that in her club too, mentorship program. Coaching and mentorship, is it the same thing, Young May? Um, I learned that they are not the same <laughs> by reading what Christine mentioned, the, the mentor uh, module, mentoring module that Toastmaster International have. Uh, for anyone who have completed two levels. Um, no, it's not the same. Coaching, it's more like the coach lay out the plan for training uh, and the, the trainee follow it. But for coach, for mentoring, it the mentor is more like a guide and helping the mentee along the way, giving suggestion, but it's never the one who, to me, lay out the exact plan of action the mentor is more like an um, empowering figure to give suggestion and guidance. The coach is more down to the specific. Here are the plans and here are what you can do from A to B. So to me, that those are the distinctions. What about you, Barbara? Can you shed light on that? I okay. think Young May said it perfectly. I can't add anything to that. <laughs> okay. So Barbara, what are some do's and don'ts of mentoring? Well, you do want to, as I said before, establish a relationship with your mentee, but you don't want to make that person into a, a duplicate of yourself as a mentor. I'm very outgoing, can't tell, but not <laughs> everybody is. Everybody has their own comfort level with speaking or getting up and doing. So you can't force, you really should not force anybody to do anything. You really need to, a do is to learn what the goal is of that new member, of that mentee. That's the first thing you need to do as a mentor. So you can understand how to guide them. Maybe somebody just wants to be able to, to give a toast at a wedding. We've used that a lot. Well, that's, that's just a, a little goal. Like I, my goal was to speak in front of 300 people relatively soon after I joined. Those were two very, very different goals. And I wouldn't have wanted to be treated like that person that was just going to get up and give a toast. And that toast person probably doesn't ever think they will ever need to speak in front of 300 people. That's my big do. I'll leave my other panelists for some other suggestions as far as do's and don'ts. Same. Can we hear your insights on that? Do's and don'ts of mentoring? Well, our discussion so far, I think we've really focused on mentoring newer members and probably more specifically speech projects. I guess a don't is don't forget that your fellow members can also use mentoring when it comes to their, their own leadership goals. And, you know, frankly, I am a mentor to someone who is, has been a member longer than I have, but he has some specific things he's trying to accomplish. Uh, due to his work schedule, he's not been around as much as he would have liked over the past couple of years. So 
my do is to keep in mind that the mentoring can be a newer member, can be an older member. Maybe you're a mentor to someone, but then someone's a mentor to you. We all have our different challenges, our different goals, like Barbara was talking about. So, you know, be open to the idea of, you know, mentoring people with more experience than you and also being mentored by people maybe who are newer than you, who have some skills and strengths that you would like to, to gain from. So he's talking about the reverse mentorship, right, Christine? I think he's talking about more advanced skills okay. in semesters, not just for new members. Okay, so mentorship, we've been hearing about this mentorship for a while now, and we're on this platform to let others know that Mentorship is something that it's good in Toastmasters clubs, right? Or is it something that you should shy away from? Tane, you've been around for a while, a while and you've already even told us you're mentoring people that are even more advanced than you. Do you think that's a great idea to continue on this level of having men, you have it in your club already, work on it, build on it, or is it something we should shy away from after a while. Uh, in terms of shying away personally or from having the program overall? Both ways. Well, I, I think the, the mentoring should, well, will always have a place because ideally you'll always have new members. And the biggest thing I think for me is to realize that everybody has different strengths. You know, you, you do things much better than I do. There are things Maybe I do better than you. I have no idea. <laughs> but you know, as if you know, if as we continue to know each other as Toastmasters, we can discover what those are, and you know, it's just an opportunity to learn from each other. And I've often found the best way to learn something is to try to teach it to somebody because it, you it helps you realize what you really do and do not understand, and also where your own strengths lie or could be improved. So Tane, you've been almost all around the world during COVID through this Toastmasters. And what are some of the ways you've seen mentorship being established in other clubs? Is it formal, informal, or like you said, you've been to, you joined Canada and South Africa. Did you, were you able to experience some of the mentoring? Well, in most of my visits, and to clarify an earlier point, I did not visit every club in the world. I still have about <laughs> 16,800 to go. Oh, you're counting. <laughs> well, in, in most cases, I only visited the club once, but certainly saw different styles. You know, um, I went to a, a meeting in the Northwest Territories of Canada, which was in a couple's kitchen it was the two of them and th three of us guests. But oh again, God. we all took the opportunity to learn from one another. Now, the club I belong to in Canada was an advanced club. And my attendance there was a little spotty just due to my schedule. I had more experience with the club in South Africa, was able to attend fairly regularly for about a year. Uh, it was a newer club. I didn't honestly see that much evidence of a mentor program. It wasn't something they actively talked about. So the thing to take away from that, I guess, is to realize that not every club really has any sort of mentoring program in place. But from my experience, uh, the rewards of having one just are, are great for everyone. Thank you. So Young May. In your club, what are some do's and don'ts you might want to ask this panel that you think you might struggle with or you think might come up or are you comfortable? Because you have their phone numbers and emails now. <laughs> um, yes, I have learned so much from Christine and from Barbara and Thane and from you. Um, now I feel like I'm more ready to start the mentorship program in my club. Um, the obstacle I see was people's uh, pushback say, oh, I'm not experienced enough to be the mentor. But what you all heard what Thane said, 
It could be like a reverse mentorship. Your mentee could be stronger in, than you in certain areas, and you can learn from them. It's a mutual relationship, a two-way street, like Barbara said. So that is a good selling point to anyone who pushed back. Uh, and I plan, I plan to present that way. And I also like Christine's suggestion of establishing a VP mentorship. So frankly, I am the VP education, and I'm doing everything, including the mentorship. I could only barely keep track of who's being mentee or buddies uh, in our club. Who are the buddy uh, in the current buddy program? Who ended it? Um, how was your experience? I was only up to the point where I can keep track of who's with who and how their experience have been um, after the, the, the eight weeks relationship. So I'm up to that point. So it's definitely a great idea to establish a VP mentorship role and that I would definitely do. So those are some of the takeaways I have. And um, I, I highly, to answer your quite earlier question, it's a great idea to have the mentor program because as VP president, I mean, VP education, I feel the burn because I'm always the one who's cheer people on after they finish the speech. I say, great job, you know, and I always encouraging people, oh, you can do this. But if you have mentors for these in, uh, individual members, they can serve your role to help encourage them. That will take a big load off the VP education. And also the club don't develop this um, mentality like, oh, we have a mother hand overlooking us. You know, we are taken care of. We can all sit back and relax. I don't like that kind of mentality. And it's not good for developing your leadership uh, within the club also. So I think having a mentor, having mentors, a mentor program is a great idea. It can also, those mentors can develop leadership skills and they can feed into your club's uh, leadership, uh, you know, those uh, executive uh, roles. So those are pipelines for your leadership roles in the club. So I highly suggest and recommend that. Thank you, Young May. Um, Christine, because we're a fairly new club and Young May is talking about one of the things we just we experienced. Like she said, when we started our clubs, we didn't have anybody that had finished level two, except you probably that could step into the mentorship program. And one of the things was like, we actually searched for whoever in the club would like to be the mentor, the VP of mentoring. And the other thing we, that came across our mind was how do we pair people up, being that we don't have any level two completed. Can you shed light on that, please? Yeah, I think that we, just opened up the opportunity to all of the members of the club, asking who wants to serve as a mentor, even though you haven't completed levels one and two, which if you go by the technical rules of Toastmasters, when the Pathways Mentor Program opens up, you would need to have completed level two. I think opening it up to everybody, making an announcement at the beginning of the meeting, following up with an email to the entire club. And also I will say that having had prior Toastmasters experience before Delivered with Excellence Chartered, I was able to give a speech about mentoring as one of my level two speeches. So I had experience being a mentor in a different club and I spoke about that experience. So I think that that helped. And so maybe if nobody in your club has any mentoring experience within Toastmasters, you can either speak about mentoring experiences outside of Toastmasters and relate that, or again, reach out to somebody outside of your club to come in and speak about the benefits of being a mentor or having a mentor. What about you, Barbara? Do you have any ideas of how to approach that? Yeah, I, I love what my co-panelists have said. And while I was listening, I was thinking it's especially about the newer clubs where there may not be experienced members. And that's where I, the word mentor might be intimidating. So if there's a newer club or a club that's wanting to start that kind of program, maybe calling it a asking for buddy volunteers. 
to, to anybody who wants to be a Toastmaster buddy. And they could be paired up just simply by pulling names out of a hat and though suggest that those two get together 15 or minutes or a half an hour before the meeting to talk about what challenges they had over the last week or if they need help, one might need help navigating or they both can get together. I hadn't, I hadn't seen really all the workings of the recent changes to the website until yesterday when I was walking my new mentee through getting established in pathways. He wanted to choose a different path than he had chosen when he joined and he had already given an icebreaker speech. We had to go through all of that. And so that kind that's a less pressure relationship that might lead to one or both of those people being a mentor later on. It's, it, it's very hard, like as they've said, as my panelists have said, to start a mentorship program when you're all new or when you don't have enough people who think they are capable of being a mentor. It's, it's just a small way of giving back to our fellow members in a club. And if we make it sound less intimidating as mentorship, oh no, I have to know everything. <laughs> I don't know everything after all these years. I'm willing to admit it. Let's learn together, mentee, mentor. Let's look at it. If we can't figure it out, I'll ask someone like all of my other, my co-panelists or other friends I know who have been in Toastmasters. And it doesn't have to be somebody who's been here longer. There's so such a variance of knowledge within our Toastmasters community. And every, I can't say everybody because that's an absolute word. 99% of people are willing to share and help. There's always that one cranky person somewhere you don't want to ask something. Some days I'm that cranky person. <laughs> but you can all find help. And there's no harm, even if you're a mentor, saying, I don't know everything, but I want to help somebody. And that person may help me in the long term. Thank you, Barbara. I don't know everything, but I want to help somebody. Jane, you've been around for a while. I'm, I have to refer back to you because your club, you said how strong are you, 60 strong, and you have the mentor program, and you are the coordinator of the mentoring program. How do you pair people up? How do you know they're a good fit? All sorts of good questions. <laughs> And in all honesty, it's a learning process as we go. Uh, in terms of pairing people up, well, for instance, this year so far, we've had about 20 new members. Wow. Again, a, a mixed blessing, right? <laughs> well, part of it, there are some people who honestly don't want a mentor. So I first, I first make sure that all the new members are aware of the opportunity and explain what it's about. Uh, I, for the coming meeting this coming Thursday, I think we have four new members. I, my, my whole point for this coming Thursday is just let's meet each other and chat a little bit, get an idea of what you want and to see if you'd like to move forward with having a mentor. So I established the interest in having a mentor because it, again as the other panelists have said it needs to be a two-way street they need to see the value in having a mentor now finding a mentor for all these new members well i do my best to spread things out you know some people are happy to have two or three mentees for other people one mentee is plenty as I've reached out so far, I've only been turned down once. The person I asked said, well, I just don't think my style would be a good fit for him. And I, and I wrote back, thank you. What are you, who would you suggest who could be a good mentor for this person? And he gave me two or three names and I reached out and 
this person was more than happy to be a mentor. So I paired them up. These are the two that are both speaking this coming Thursday. So the whole process is, again, always present it as an opportunity. Don't try to badger or guilt any, anybody into taking on a mentor or mentee role. And just keep talking about it in terms of the benefits for everyone. Now I'm able, I think I have attended 99.99% .99 of the meetings for the past 10 years at Princeton. And a lot of it is being around people and getting to know them and understanding their styles, their personalities. So I think that's helped me a lot in saying, well, I'm going to try to pair these two people up or these two people up. In some cases, I've just said, would you be interested in being a mentor? In other cases, I've said, would you be interested in being a mentor to this particular person? So one size doesn't fit all. Uh, it's just, I guess, my instinct from gaining a sense of people by getting to know them first before I try to move forward with the mentor program. Thank you, Tang. Go ahead, Barbara. Yeah, I just wanted to add one little thing to that. And sometimes the potential mentee will approach a member and say, I'd like to work with you. When, when we've mentioned the mentor program, knowing we have had new members in the audience, I've had a couple of people approach me uh, or approach other members because they've observed the style of the person speaking or even their table topic. That can be an example to someone. So allowing sometimes the mentee to observe others and approach the person to see if they'd want to be their mentor or buddy. It also works. Yeah, if, if I Thank could you. jump back in, that's an excellent point that Barbara made. There have been a few cases I've said, well, is there anybody that you would like to be your mentor? And they've given me names and, you know, I've approached the, the desired mentor and I think they were, they were rather flattered that they were picked out mm -hmm. of everyone to be chosen as the mentor. So exactly. very good point on Barbara's part. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Barbara. Christine, you pair people up too. <laughs> Any ideas of how not to pair people up? <laughs> so Delivered with Excellence is a corporate club. One of the benefits of our club is that it brings together employees from all different levels, from all different departments, people who might not work with each other or even see each other in the hallways. When I'm pairing up new members with mentors, I try to avoid pairing up people who already know each other or work in the same department, try to diversify it so that the, men, the new member gets to meet somebody new. And I would also mention that it's a good idea to make sure that both the mentors and the mentees know that if things aren't working out, that that's okay. They can move on and be paired up with somebody else. So if you're a coordinator or a VP mentoring of your club, make sure that people know that you're a safe person to talk to if there are issues like that. We don't want people to struggle through six months of an awful relationship. Having said that, I have not experienced any issues with the pairings in our clubs. Most of our mentors are excited to share their knowledge about Toastmasters with the new members and things have been going well. Yeah, we have Kathy here to prove that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I already much, found Kathy. out that she's she might be my successor Ooh, next wow. year. As the Great job, mentor. Kathy. Great job. <laughs> so in saying all this about mentor mentorship program, we just had Kristen mention like it should be like almost a six month a six month uh, venture with your you the mentor and the mentee per Toastmasters guideline. What do you say, Ting? Is that a fair amount of time to be able to get somebody 
encourage Nitos Master's platform? Well, I, again, I think that's a good guideline. Uh, I know in the past they always talked about it, in the, the pre pathways days, you know, having the relationship last for the first three speeches. We've always stressed that it really, the relationship can last as long as it makes sense for both people. I know we've had a couple of cases where the mentor mentee might have been together for two or three years now because they could feel that they're continuing to learn from one another. But to your point, you know, you need to give it at least some time to give it a chance to really blossom and develop and grow. Thank you. What about you, Barbara? Do you think that six months is something we should stick with or we should walk with our mentee as long as they need the help and they're showing interest? I think it, you can't put a definition on the time that someone would need. As I previously mentioned, I'm still giving attention to somebody after, I think, four years. But just occasionally, she doesn't need a lot of support, but I'm being encouraging. I want her to speak a, at least once a quarter, but I'm not forcing her. It just depends on the relationship and the person and their needs. You can always have a little powwow after six months. You can talk with the mentee and say, oh, well, I don't even like to put a time on it. But I, if you're a good mentor, you get the feeling when you can set someone free. And you can say, so-and-so, you've done a great job. I've gotten you started. Do you want to continue? Or do, are you able to navigate on your, on your own? You can always feel free to call me or email me or text me if you have a question. Or if you want to continue to meet or whatever the arrangement has been between mentor, mentee, we can continue that. So you, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to be somebody's mentor, help them through a speech or two, and then let, you know, let them fall off the face of the earth. You really need to at least communicate or send a text or something once a month just to check in. Hey, so-and-so, do you need anything? Happy to help. Are you struggling for, I see you haven't given a speech in, in two months. Are you struggling for a topic? So just being there, it takes so little time to send a text or an email to say, hey, how you doing? I'm still here for you. Oh, wow. Thank you, Barbara. I didn't think about it that way. I just felt like once the six months is over and the person doesn't even reach out to you, so you're still saying, say hi to the person, keep being an encouraging person to the person and let them know we miss you on this platform. Come back and visit mm -hmm. us in a while. What are some things, young May, that you think you might want to know within that six months guideline? Should you say within the six months guideline, if I see this, that, that, that in the person, should I let them go and then visit them once in a month, just like Barbara just mentioned? Or should I just keep being encouraging? Like she said, every quarter, just check in. What do you think? Um, I think it depends on your club's particular situation. I still, most of our members are still quite um, not comfortable with the mentoring uh, idea. I mean, they're they acceptable, they're receptive to the buddy program that we have established. And um, so it's a bit special for my club because sometimes Members get distracted and they thought they have to improve their language fluency to X amount of level in order to be a good public speaker. So I try to keep the um, buddy program short, like eight weeks, and, and try to uh, make sure they understand that the speech, delivering a speech is the most effective way to enhance your language skill. Don't try to remember how many vocabularies, etc. Um, so I try to keep them focused on the deliverable a speech so that they don't end up because to learn a language people can tend turn decades you know you don't it doesn't mean it take them 30 years to deliver their speech so i try to keep the program short and um so that to keep them focused on using pathway speech oriented because giving a speech is the best way it's a project-based learning honestly 
it's the best way for them to um, to enhance the language skill because they have to give a speech, they have to make the message stick, they have to find a vivid description, they have used more vocabulary around the, to the topic. It's a project based learning. So I keep it short to eight weeks for now and I like things say learn and observe and see if it works or if it doesn't, then I uh, we adjust it. Um, so that's my take on that and absolutely agree with the uh, Barbara and our co panelists um, the suggestion it. It's you know you have to live and learn and and see what work what don't work depends on your club situation and the membership makeup. Thank you, Young Wei. What would you say, Christine, to Young Wei to get her like guidelines because she already has like a buddy system, but she is trying to encourage her club to have that mentor program. What would you say some guidelines that you can help along, that can help her along the way? In addition to everything she's already learning from the other <laughs> panelists. Yes, <week>. yes. <laughs> Maybe a little more specifics. I, I think that having a time frame, whether it's eight weeks or six months, is good from the outset because you want to set some expectations for your buddies or your mentors and mentees. And then as, as Barbara said, everyone is on their own individual path and the relationships might continue, they might end earlier, but I think setting a timeline initially and then reviewing it along the way is a good idea. Um, I have one more question, but I don't want to hug the whole time with us. I want to see if the panel, ha um, our participants have questions, so. If you have any questions for this panel, please drop it in the chat and we'll address it. Now, let me ask my last question for today. How would you resolve mentor-mentees issues? How would you resolve problems that they might have with each other? Maybe this one comes in and tells you something and the mentor comes and tells you something, the mentee comes and tells you something else. How would you resolve that? Yeah. One thing I struggle with and I know people have already addressed it, it's trust. Coming into a mentor mentee program, I struggle with trust. So I'm always looking at it like, can I trust this person? Can I not trust this person? Will I be hearing my story from my manager or would I be hearing from my coworker? How would you resolve problems with mentor mentees? Tane? Well, if I were to be faced with that situation, I would probably turn to Christine to answer the question. No, <laughs> no in, in all honesty, uh, unfortunately, I don't think I've actually had the situation in terms of you talking about trust. I believe, for instance, at the Princeton Club, at one point, we did have three members who came from the same company, but they brought each other in and they weren't concerned, I guess, with anything being passed on beyond our meeting. If I were to be approached by a couple of members that had issues, I guess the biggest thing is to understand what their, what is the, what, I'm trying, searching for the word here. I don't want to say bone of contention, but what, what is the issue that's, that's keeping them apart? I know, well, I think in just about every club and especially Princeton, you know, we have people from so many different cultures. So sometimes it may be just a miscommunication or a misunderstanding of what was said. So it all boils down to what we're all about, which is communication, just to make sure that we are all talking about the same thing and have the same understanding of the situation. And if we can do that, I imagine that would resolve most issues. Uh, if there are other issues, well, when I first came into the position, we did have one member who approached me who was just not comfortable with her mentor for a variety of reasons, nothing that the mentor had really done other than just being herself. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we just quietly moved her, moved, her, moved her to another mentor. 
and that relationship seems to be working just fine. It's, you know, again, I've not really had the situation and I feel fortunate for that. But if, if I were to have the situation, I think a lot of it really boils down to just make sure that we're all communicating and talking about the same thing and have, having the same understanding of the situation. So Barbara, can you take that too? How would I trust somebody? Let's not say in a corporate environment now, what about in a community environment? You know something about me and being that you're my mentor, I'm trusting you to help me with some situation. And we just get to talking and, you know, we get to know each other on a level like I can just come to you and discuss stuff. I don't want to hear from Tane because Tane belongs to Princeton. You belong to Voorhees. How do I, you know, trust you to let you know, like, I'm on here on your platform, Voorhees platform, and I'm on Barbara Snyder's man's platform only. Help me be a leader, not share my story with Ting. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm kind of confused on where the question went and I apologize for that. I, as far so, as the trust, the trust thing, when you have a mentor-mentee relationship, the two of them have to discuss that upfront. If there's a conflict, as Zane said, I don't think I've seen one between mentor mentee. I've seen a club have a problem with an officer. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, I'm kind of at a loss to sort out your question. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Christine, how would you solve something like that? Like the other two, I have not seen issues, but maybe one thing that could possibly happen is that somebody volunteers to be a mentor and then repeatedly does not show up for the mentee. And in that case, I think that you would want to address the situation, communicate as Thane said, and if the person really cannot commit the time to helping out the mentee then or the buddy, then pair up the, the mentee or the buddy with somebody else in a way that doesn't discourage the earlier mentor from serving again in the future. We know that sometimes we're busier than we thought we would be with work items, with personal things. And maybe when we signed up to be a mentor, we thought we would be able to commit the time, then we couldn't. And so again, I would just encourage anybody who's coordinating a, a mentor program to have an open door policy where either side can come to you with their concerns. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, you may have a question. Yeah, I actually want to add something. Um, even though the club doesn't have a mentor program, we do have a buddy program with uh, club members from other clubs. And I just recently, for to prepare for this discussion, I asked all my mentor mentee, uh, not the buddies, and see how their experience had been in in the first period. They were paired together for eight weeks, and most of them went well, except one pair. This person said, "Well, I emailed the other buddy. She never got back to me." And when I asked my member, "Do you still want a mentor?" She said, "No, I don't want a mentor, uh, a buddy anymore." So I fear that. Um, because of this experience, she felt discouraged, discouraged, and she doesn't feel like she need a buddy anymore. It's a bad experience for her. So the takeaway lesson for me is that once we assign, pair them up as buddies or mentor men mentee, uh, as e either the VP education or the VT mem membership should check in with them, like maybe two or three weeks after the relationship started and see whether they go as well. If not quickly, how problems uh, troubleshoot? Because especially for mentee or someone who's shy, they might not reach out to you and say, "Hey, I need help. This person doesn't respond to my email." In that case, they kind of you know lost, get lost somewhere, and they feel discouraged. And that's my takeaway: to check in early with them after the relationship start to make sure things are going okay. And so, uh, Christine said to, she has a mentor meet up every month. That's a great point, a check-in point with them. If the assignment mentor doesn't show up, 
<laughs> that's a warning sign, you know. So I really like Christine's idea. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I think we we tend to rely on email too much. I'm old enough that I remember when you had you didn't have email and you had to have a phone to communicate. Mm -hmm. I think the pairs should have should establish what's the best way to communicate with each other because some people get hundreds of emails a day and one email can get lost. If I call someone and leave a voicemail, well, some people's voicemails are full. Text, you know, a text, quick text. Hey, I, I sent you an email. I'd really like to talk to you. Please let me know when you have time. The, it's just sending one email and saying, well, I never heard from that person. Yes, Young May's situation was somebody didn't want to be a mentor. But it's so easy for us to say, oh, I sent an email and I never heard. We have to follow up. The thing called a telephone still works. <laughs> Maybe not the home phone because the caller ID, of course, is, is a deterrent. But yeah, you have to, you can't just give up. And that's part of being a good mentor as well. If you haven't heard from your mentee, you need to establish contact. And I think anybody coordinating a mentor program, give a speech once a month or every other month about mentoring or part of mentoring. What's good about it? What can you as a mentor gain from it? What can the mentee gain from it? Reminding club members that this doesn't take a lot of work. You establish what your communication scheme will be with the mentor mentee they should establish it together all kinds of things like that it can get speeches out of the way for you it's not just that initial you know talk about the time you were a mentee talk about the time you were a mentor this could be another take on it for those of us who have been around a while talking about mentoring and the benefits not just from your own personal style or experience. Thank you so much. And Young May, do we have questions in the chat? I have one question here and it says they have a VPE who has been trying to pair up members for two years. So they're asking, is, should there be a collaboration between VPE and VPE, VP of mentor? membership to collaborate together to get them to have the mentorship program in place and also how do they stir up how can they stir up interest in their club or even have accountability for their mentors who would like to answer <laughs> go ahead barbara or a um we, we realized a long time ago at Voorhees that the VPE has such a huge role. When we established our mentorship program, we decided to make it part of the VP membership instead of the VPE. I like the collaboration part. That's a great suggestion, but that VPE does have a lot on their plate. That's that's one suggestion that I would I would make to somebody. What about you, Christine? What suggestion will you make to the person? I would agree with that, with what Barbara said about the the VP membership. As far as getting some interest from your members, again, giving speeches. Re requesting mentors. And I think when you have something started, it can be self-sustaining as your mentees become mentors in the future. Thank you. What about you, Tane? How do we get mentors for our mentors? That's one of the questions the person asked, Nicole asked. How do we get mentors for our mentees? No, how do we get mentors for our mentors? No mentors mentees. for our mentors? Yes. Well, besides what Barbara and Christine have already mentioned, uh, 
I think a lot of it is just awareness. I, one of them talked about giving a speech on a regular basis about it. You know, especially if you're new to Toastmasters, you just don't know, you don't start to know anything about anything about the organization. So just being making people aware that the mentorship program does exist is a big step. And if we're talking about getting mentors for mentors, even talking about that, because you know, it's I just think it's something that a lot of people maybe have not considered as a possibility. So it all boils down to awareness and just having a lot of communication about it, both formally and informally. You know, in my case at Princeton, you know, I try to have a lot of individual conversations as opposed to maybe a group presentation. And it allows me to be a little more focused as well. Thank you, Tane. So if I remember something Christine mentioned, Christine mentioned that you can reach out to other clubs to get them to come in and help you mentor. So can people reach out to Kristen to ask for mentors to help mentor new clubs members? Well, in all honesty, that's something that has not been presented as a possibility or opportunity yet. Uh, if somebody wants to explore that, I certainly am open to exploring it along with them. That's an interesting concept. And especially with so many clubs still meeting virtually at some level, it, it opens up a lot of opportunities. Because I, th I think especially here in New Jersey, we've, we, we here in District 38, a lot of us have gotten to know people in District 83, which is Northern New Jersey and Staten Island much better. And, you know, our Toastmaster experience has been uh, become a lot richer because of that. And frankly, where Princeton sits, um, you know, I can be in District 83 in a 10 minute drive. So along the, the borders, um, you know, a lot of times members of District 83 might be our neighbors and just due to where they work, they belong to a club in a different district. And this is a way to get to know them better and share our, our experiences between the two districts or other districts for that matter. Thank you, Tane. Young May, you had a question? Um, oh, no, actually I have, um, <clears throat> want to add to that. Um, I, rem I just want to give a shout out to Jeanette who posted in the chat that her club has um, 20 new members and she's asking help uh, to get some mentors. So congratulations, Jeanette. First of all, that's awesome that you have 20 members. Um, so what I think is um, it's about networking. Toastmasters about networking. You can definitely look outside of your club or try other, you know, within your club matches. In terms of looking outside of club, you can, don't forget your club is part of an area. An area is a level, organizational level that's above club level. It usually is made up of four to five clubs. You can reach out to your area director. That person should know uh, where to, you know, get some mentors for your club. It's in the area director's interest that your club is, you know, is live and well. It's in their interest. It doesn't look good on them if your club goes bad, you know. So if the area director happened to be very busy and not responding by email, you know, like Barbara said, call them if you can manage to find a phone number. Or you can reach higher up to the division level. The division is made up of multiple areas. And uh, the idea here is a particular division director. You can look on to a District 38's website and look at the organizational chart. That's where you'll find all the uh, contacts for area directors and the division director. And now finally, above the division, we have district. District 38 is where we belong to. And District 38 has a program director. Um, her name is Rhonda Young. And you, you can reach out to her. In fact, you can reach out to any officer and they can lead you to the right person who can help you with that. So I encourage you that remember it's networking, attend other club meetings and see if you spot a willing person, a helpful Toastmaster, you know, text her in the in text her or him in the chat box, say, Hey, I'm a new club. I have so many members. 
would you be interested? You know, like uh, Thang say, ask if would you be interested? That's it. That's all it takes. Ask. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Young May. Barbara also is a division director mm -hmm. this year, too. Mm -hmm. So, and Christine has put the in the chat the division and area directors. Like Young May said, and Tang said, we don't know we need that help. So, if you're telling the district this is one of the things we need for our clubs, then just like Young May said, the program director can see this is something we can establish in our district. Have a mentor mentorship program where you can tap into mentors to come to your club to help you out. Mm -hmm. You're in a fairly new club or your club that is trying to establish this mentor program. Reach out to Rhonda and let her know, or reach out to your area directors or division directors. Mm -hmm. Let them know so we can get back to the top three. We're always learning. And you know the slogan for this year, many voices, one team. Mm -hmm. We're trying to come under that umbrella to say, our clubs are not just individuals. We're, to, we're together, neat family. So that networking program, Young May is mentioning, can only happen and work with your help by us knowing this is the, this is the niche, this is where the help is needed next. We don't want to lose your club. We don't want you to lose your members. Mm -hmm. We want to work with you to get you to where you need to be to make that succession plan work for your team. So reach out. Don't be isolated. Don't think about it like you're on your own. No, we're a family. It's a big family. But just like everybody in here said, when you connect to the right person, then you keep going because they'll keep looking for help for you. We keep encouraging you. Anybody mm -hmm. with any other questions? Well, I, oh, I'm sorry, Adia Tate. I just had a comment. A lot of people are in the mindset, what's in it for me? And when I was working, and it depends on your position, I oh, part of my annual goal setting for my position, 10% was called were called personal goals, personal development goals. And joining Toastmasters always gave me something to put on there every single year. I want to complete, well, in those days, it was the, the manuals, but I always put on there that I wanted to complete whatever manual, which meant giving five speeches. In talking about mentoring, it could be, you could put establish a mentoring program within my Toastmasters club. That would give somebody a, re a reward. It actually made a little bit of difference in our salary raise if we met those personal development goals in addition to the work goals. Just, just a thought, but it always, my colleagues would say, oh, I have no idea what to put on my personal development. I'm like, join Toastmasters. You'll have something to put on there every single year. <laughs> Thank you so much, Barbara. There's a question in the chat. I think Christine, you might be well able to answer. It said there are bits of on a bit of a different note. Is there an optimal size for a well-functioning club? And how many members should we strive to have in total? And how many members need to be present in every meeting for a smooth mm. learning experience? I think Barbara addressed this earlier on in the panel discussion. And Again, I, I always go back to no absolutes. Every club, every person is an individual and is unique. But ideally you wanna have all of the meeting roles filled by different people. <laughs> and having, so that means that you want a Toastmaster of the day, a general evaluator, a timer, a grammarian, a counter, speaker, evaluators, table topics master, people who are going to answer the table topics questions so that the burden isn't always on the same people each time. And that's at least 10 roles there. So you want to have it, I would think, at least 10 or 15 people attending a meeting and then extrapolating from that, knowing that not everybody is going to be in attendance in the meeting every time, maybe at least 25 or 30 people in your club, generally for the Distinguished Club Program, a club is expected to either have 20 members or an addition of 
five new members in the year, I think it is. So I, I would keep that in mind. It's all about not putting the burden all on the same people each time. Also having the agenda filled in advance. The more members that you have, the easier that is to do. Thank you, Christine. You heard Barbara mention it in the chat. You want quality over quantity. <laughs> Tane, we have a few more minutes, like pretty much two minutes. Anything you can say to round this all up in a nutshell? Well, in everything you do, have fun. Because when we all have fun, that keeps everyone coming back and we can build on that and grow even stronger. So have fun. Thank you, Tane. What about you, Barbara? Anything to say to round us all up? Uh, I can't say it any better. And it has to be enjoyable. Thank you. What about you, Young May? Anything? Well, going back to live, learn, and teach, um, the our, our members today who come to this training session, you don't realize that, but you're already being mentored by the mentors. Um, so definitely watch out for training opportunities from Toastmasters, um, and even even from trainings that not directly related on mentorship, you can enrich your knowledge and. The more knowledge you have, you seem more credible to your ment mentees and you can help them better. And um, yeah, just keep taking the, the training, the District's 38th uh, training. We try to provide trainings for officers on all kinds of topics that you are interested in. And yeah, don't be afraid to reach out. And if you have any comment, any suggestion on topics that you want cover, just send an email to Rhonda, the program quality director, and we'll follow up. And um, I'll definitely pass on Jeanette's email to Rhonda about her club's need for uh, perhaps mentors. And since she has 20 new members. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, young man. Christine, round us up. I'll go full circle to what Thane said in the beginning, which is progress over perfection. Also heard it phrased as done is better than perfect. That's certainly what my experience has been in Toastmasters. Early on, I gave my icebreaker speech. And if I had waited for it to be perfect, I'd probably still be sitting here not having delivered my icebreaker speech nearly eight years later. So have fun while doing it, but you're not expected to know everything. Mm -hmm. You're not expected to be perfect, but this is where you can practice so that when you're speaking outside of Toastmasters, you are much better than you would be otherwise. Mm -hmm. okay. Christine, my art club says better than horrible. <laughs> Anything you do is better than horrible or not doing it. So I love that <laughs> what you're, you just said. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, my knowledge panelists. And that's it. We're at 11. We're 11 one. Thank you, all these fantastic people, for coming to share your time with us on a Saturday. We're still here for a few minutes, but that's it for the training for today. Thank you so much for coming out. And please, yep. just like uh, Young May said, Rhonda is all ears. Let her know what you need her for. Thank you. Yep. If you. If anybody has other questions, I can hang for a few minutes.